Hello, my name is Tara and I'm a gameplay programmer at Future Lab, currently living in France, and I wanted to do this video for the younger me who suffered a lot from the imposter syndrome. I think the first step is to acknowledge what imposter syndrome is and think on how you might be related to it. Having the imposter syndrome is not a big deal for me, but it becomes one when you let the negative thoughts give you a lack of confidence. It is wearing and can destroy your mental health. One thing that I saw a lot from women playing games is them saying, but I'm bad at this game before playing with others. You don't actually have to justify yourself on how good or bad you are before playing games with others, because games are here to entertain people and not be the best at it. And that pattern can be reproduced professionally because we don't feel legitimate enough to do our job. We feel that everyone is better than us. You don't have to be the best, just do your best. Keep in mind that there are some people that are unable to do the things that you do. You can be strong in one area and weaker in another one, and that's fine. Try not to compare yourself with others. Everyone is different. We have our own set of skills, we have different learning curves, and it's completely okay. I think what helped me most uh, to overcome the imposter syndrome was receiving regular positive feedbacks from my coworkers, not only my lead, but anyone I'm working with. So don't forget to congratulate your colleagues on their work and also give them advice on how they could inform themselves. My name is Jenny, I'm a senior VFX artist and I'm also a pretty solid case of imposter syndrome. I don't think it can be completely overcome but what helps me deal with it is this. I have a list uh, that I collated over the years with all the nice things that people said about my work. That can be screenshots from Slack conversations or uh, just a note when someone said, yo, that looks cool, alongside with who said it and when. And on the particular bad days, I go over that list and I actually have a conversation with my imposter. I'm trying to convince him that all the nice things people said about me are true. And that helps. Working as a game designer, um, you have to come up with lots of ideas and those ideas are always being discussed and questioned and work out. It's one of the best parts of the job, but it's also one of the most confronting parts of the job. And sometimes you're just struggling to come up with good ideas and you get those feelings of um, wonder whether you think you're good enough, whether you think you have the, the brain to come up with the ideas that are needed at that moment in time. But I think what helps me a lot is just a good bit of mindfulness, just reminding myself of those small victories when I do come up with a good idea, taking a mental note of it, even writing it down and saying, yes, that's the thing that I came up with that's gotten into the game. Those small victories are important. I feel like people often are looking for those big win moments, um, those big ideas and stuff like that, that those big mechanics and features. That's what designers are looking for to get into the game. But just when you're trying to talk something through and maybe you come up with an idea that gets you to that next step, that's a victory. And those things keep me going. Those things um, are a really great part about the job and help me fend off imposter syndrome. Keeping check of those small wins is very important. All right, see you later.